Welcome. We're here in Miami Beach. Everyone's happy. The sun's out. So it's a perfect day to talk <laughs> behavior analysis and education. Today we have with us Paul Kalick, who's an education attorney in New Jersey. And he's been through a lot of litigation. He typically settles cases very well, makes school districts and parents happy, all for the learner. So what I, what I love about Paul is no, no matter what, he always circles it back to the student. And no matter who he's representing, whether it's a family, whether it's a school district, everything always ties back to the, to the learner uh, and their improvement. I wrote down a couple questions and one of them was a really good one here from Dr. Progar. What are some things that a, a newer clinician, like a newer board certified behavior analyst, if they're consulting in a school, what are some things that they should know when they first go in there and they're kind of new to the, the school environment? The first thing they should know is their role, specifically what their role is and to not deviate from that role. Um, they're working with members of the IEP team. They may be working with the director of special services, but what they need to recognize is they have to understand what the IEP says, understand what the child's needs are, and then look at the IEP, look at the behavior intervention plan if the child has one, or if you're doing an FBA, do that with fidelity, know your role, constantly do what you're supposed to do. That's it. That's the easiest, simplest mm -hmm. thing for me to give as advice. Not so easy to implement sometimes, depending upon the school district, yep. be, depending upon the personalities that are there, who's the director of special services, mm -hmm. who's the case manager. Sometimes the teachers don't want to work with the BCBA you know, mm -hmm. as effectively as the BCA wants. Sometimes the teachers don't want to work with the CA. Sometimes the instructional yep. aides don't want to work with those people as well. But, you know... Um, when it comes down to it, understand that you have a job to do and do it as consistently as possible. When you're saying know your role, that's something that we preach a lot here at BDA. Um, do you find a lot of times that behavior consultants and clinical associates sometimes deviate from that role and it kind of exacerbates and mm -hmm. produces a very large problem for the district and themselves? Yes. And, and a lot of that time, or a lot of the times that when that happens, it's not like the BCBA and the CA want to create a problem for the most part but what happens is that sometimes they will get influenced by other people in the district right to say do it this way or maybe try it that way but your roles right are specific and your roles need to be implemented with fidelity once you deviate from that that's where the problem starts right so it's the difficulty of when you get those sort of outside influences you know from people right you have to recognize that what do I do to address this immediately, right? So it doesn't become a problem. What are your protocols in, inside your organization when that happens? You know, hey, the case manager is telling me to do this or the teacher is saying I'm not going to follow the IEP, um, you know, exactly as it's written, you know, or it's not being implemented properly. And I know that, you know, in my strategies and techniques that I'm trying to help this child with, they're not listening to me. What do you do to talk to your people to then talk to the administration and the district so you get on the same page as quickly as possible? Because otherwise, if it's quiet and you let it go and you're like, oh, I don't want to rock the boat or I don't want, I don't want to be a tattletale, right? I, I can handle it. I'm an adult. But ultimately, it all trickles down to the child. And if you're not doing what you're supposed to do as adults and you know you're not supposed to be doing it, the child's going to suffer. I think something that we do... Um that's pretty great within BDA. We have two support systems for BCs and CAs who are um, working within the district. One would be that um, coach that each of our employees have to go to with specific issues and things they might run into when working in a district. And then we also have our district directors, which are kind of like those liaisons between right. the district administration and then the BDA administration. So if a BC is kind of contacting that um, conflict between their roles and what their responsibilities are, they could go to that director and kind of put that on them because mm -hmm. they're not, they're in the school and they work as, like I said, that liaison, but the BCs are there weekly. So like you said, that quote unquote tattletale. Right. So utilizing their district director, it kind of takes a lot of that stress on them 
and then the director can have that tough conversation with the district. Do you have training? Do you have training within your organization to assist in how to have those types of communications? Yes. Okay. We do. We I, have, I would stress um, those, you know, as strongly as possible. And I think Brianna can speak to that. We have a lot of leadership yeah. meetings and um, and even with like coaching operations. cohorts, exactly. um, we've done a lot of those. And even just like how to have those tough talks and how to have those conversations, how to pair with district staff. Like we talk about it so often that your day one, yeah, we want to make sure that behavior plan is implemented and we're implementing the IEP, but you have to pair first. Once you're paired, we want to make sure those things are in place. But then, okay, now that we are paired, what happens after that? Are we giving that feedback? And are they still not implementing whatever we're asking them to do based on their IEP? And then where do we go from there? Maybe we are having that tough talk. Um, maybe we go in and, you know, for some of my kids, especially kids where I wanna make sure that there's a lot of treatment fidelity, any behavior plan I write, I write that in there now that the BCBA will be taking treatment fidelity data on that behavior plan so it's specifically in there so nobody sees it as a surprise. So sometimes when we go into those schools we're like well you can't take data on me that's not how this works and we have to because how do we know if they're implementing it appropriately if we don't have that data. So I've been doing that a lot now in my behavior plans is just writing it in there um, when I do that FBA so then it's covered and the teacher knows it's coming and then they're a little more amenable to it. So we don't have those conversations, you know, a month or two into the school year where it's like, hey, well, you're not implementing it. My data show this. And they're upset because I'm collecting data on them. Now. I have a district when that exact thing happened, right? The teacher was saying, I'm not doing that. I, I don't agree with what you wrote in your plan. You know, I'm not going to do it. And because basically you don't know me, you don't, you don't tell me what to do because I'm employed by the district. Right, and now here you're a subcontractor, a private company come in and tell me what to do. But then it was written into the plan, the child had it in his IEP, and the teacher still wouldn't do it until the superintendent contacted me and said, what can I do? And I said, you can absolutely discipline that teacher because she's not carrying out her job duties, right? And she knows it's in the plan, and she knows that BIP is in the child's IEP, and she's purposely not doing it, right? So she's not implementing the IEP, so she's violating the law. So had a nice talk with the teacher, had a nice talk with the union rep, and guess what? Teacher still didn't want to do it. So we're trying to figure out what the real reason was. And as we dug and dug and dug, we found out that the teacher and the BCBA hated each other, right? They just had a personality count. That was it, and that was, and then we recognized that we tried to do a little um, dispute resolution between them, so now I'm trying to make them like each other, right, and work together, and it just didn't work. They could not work together. So we had to remove that person from, you know, um, the BCBA, from that classroom, um, and the teacher had to get a different person. You know, when it comes to what you brought up, you made it clear that it's important for people to stick to the rules. What are examples that, that you can think of where you've seen clinicians go outside the scope of what they should be doing? And, and what are the reasons that that happens? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons where it happens. One of the reasons where I see it the most is that the team and the BCBA are not on the same page, right? For whatever reason, you know, sometimes you'll never know until you do a full-blown right. investigation, right? But they're not on the same page. And then what happens is that the BCBA is so angry with the team, right, that the BCBA starts deviating from what the BCBA is supposed to do, right? And then the team says, well, wait a minute, why are you doing that? And the BCBA is saying, because you're not allowing me, you know, to fully implement what I need to do. You're working against me. You're giving me the dirty look, you know, you're not giving me the support I need. It's all these things that happen, you know, in the district. And then the next thing you know, they're so far off base that they're not even talking to each other. Right. And then the BCBA goes out on his or her own and, you know, starts to try to amend that by start doing things that are not in the plan. And then that becomes so problematic. These kinds of things are interesting because a board certified behavior analyst, one of their roles is to be able to work with other people and understand human mm -hmm. behavior. So when a behavior analyst cannot vibe or get along or work and train well with it, you know, in a reciprocal way with a teacher, I would, 
I would lean on the side of saying it, it's account, the, the BCBA is accountable for that, uh, especially because they're the consultant. And it, as long as they've tried everything they can to pair with that teacher to show that they're willing to be hands-on, roll up their shirt sleeves, show behavior change in the moment. To me, I would say the BCBA holds a, a certain level of accountability for that failure in the relationship. Of course, there are two people involved, but...